famous by at least one uh, big period in financial history, but now also available in ETFs from Panagram. Joining us, Tim Wickstrom is a managing director at the firm. It's been building CLO-based funds for a couple of years. Uh, Tim, uh, thanks for being here. Appreciate you joining. Thanks, Oliver. Thanks for having me. Okay, so I feel like we should start the conversation by just for those that still kind of associate this product with risk from the GFC, doesn't have to be like that, right? Yeah, so <clears throat> CLOs are, are not what blew up uh, it, the world in the GFC. CLOs are collateralized loan obligations, uh, much different than CDOs, which are collateralized debt obligations. Okay. The key difference being that loans are, are really – uh, within CLOs are backed by senior secured first lien uh, loans to corporations. Um, that's very different than, you know, CD, CDO squares, uh, bad mortgages, et cetera. These are, you know, top of the capital structure uh, attachment point loans to uh, real corporations that have real revenue and EBITDA uh, in the U.S. economy. Still debt, though, obviously. It is still debt. Yep. Yes. Uh, yep. And still debt. structurally, uh, structurally in terms of the kind of market structure of the financial instrument, very similar to a CDO. Uh, yes, but there the are a couple different. other differences. Yeah. So uh, t two other differences. Number one, these are actively managed pools. Um, so there, there's a manager that is actively buying and selling uh, the loans in the secondary market. Um, and that market is actually quite large um, today. Uh, and trades, you know, in pretty large volumes. Uh, and then secondly, uh, these are very diversified. These are diversified across industries uh, as well as across um, uh, different uh, loan issuers. So you have less of a correlation issue uh, where the CDOs, you know, you had a correlation issue of one when everything, you know, went south. Got it. Uh, okay. Now, of course, in uh, the broad market, we're having a discussion right now where correlations are pretty whacked out already. Uh, a huge dispersion. Basically, nothing's correlating. Uh, what are you seeing in the funds or the products that go into your funds? Uh, how, do, how are the performance of the underlying assets there comparing to what's happening in the market? Because the broad market right now is at like record levels of dispersion. We, it, both in the last week with tech and now the small cap stuff, we basically just switched the uh, dispersion around on its head. So what's happening within the products? Are they working as expected? They are working as expected. And actually, they're, they're pretty steady Eddie. Um, mm. These are not meant to be, you know, alpha generating um, instruments. They're really meant to be, you know, fixed income. And that's how we encourage people to think about it. This is a, a monthly dividend product. Uh, CLOs pay quarterly. Uh, they're floating rate instruments. And they're really meant to be a, a steady return and thought of really as a part of your fixed income portfolio. Uh, they offer higher yield relative to other uh, corporate debt of similar rating. Um, they have historically actually less defaults than uh, corporate equivalents. Trip CLO AAAs has, have never defaulted uh, in, in the history going back to the 1990s. Um, and they actually have a pretty low correlation to public debt and equities. So as we, we consider CLOs as an allocation for, for folks' uh, overall portfolios, uh, we really think it's, a, it's an interesting uh, piece uh, to put in as, as a sleeve within fixed income because it offers you that, that pretty good uh, yield, uh, low default uh, history, and uh, lower correlation. And the uh, experience in the ETF, so that's kind of the case for the products in the asset class, the experience in the ETF versus actually owning uh, the debt, well, what's the argument there? Yeah, I mean, look, so the, the historically, uh, investors were all institutions. So it was insurance companies, banks, large money managers. Yep. Um, but, at, you know, that, that has, uh, has changed since 2020 uh, when the first uh, CELO ETF was issued. Now we have 10 ETF issuers in the market uh, with over 13 billion of that, um, with over 13 billion of assets within those ETFs. So it's a growing segment. Now, overall, the market is about 1 trillion for CELO. So significant room to grow. Um, it's still dominated uh, by the institutional uh, market, but something that wasn't available to uh, retail investors in the past, and now we're excited to be able to have that access to these fantastic uh, returns um, and, and performance thus far. Okay, uh, and uh, definitely accessibility, right? 100%. Very cool that we can get uh, you know uh, products this complicated and sort of bespoke that you used to have the connections uh, with to uh, to get uh, the difference. CLOZ versus CLOX, just to make it crystal clear. You're getting slightly lower quality of the ratings in the CLOZ, which means you're going to get generally a better return, which you are in the year. That one goes down to triple B, right? CLOX, triple A. That's the one that you're, you've never seen a default in. 
So the expense ratio, cheaper for that, which makes sense, right? It's only 20 bips for CLOX versus CLOZ, which is 50. That's correct. We look at CLOX as a cash substitute um, with your risk. You're taking AAA risk um, with uh, a little bit more uh, yield given the, the spread on, on AAAs. Um, and so that, that's how we think about uh, CLO X. And then CLO Z is more of a high yield replacement. You're actually getting a little bit more yield than you would if you were buying regular way corporate triple B or double B uh, mm. risk. And um, you know, you're, you're getting access to that part of the capital structure. So a little bit of a, a different uh, sleeve and, and different risk yeah. profile between CLO Z, which, which is triple B, double B, and then CLO X, which is triple A. Totally. Uh, it seems like it's working as a pretty good sleeve, particular CLOZ right now. You're on par with the uh, a, with HYG for the year uh, and obviously beating a little, pretty much all the other popular bond funds. So it uh, looks like it's working pretty well with a little less volatility, uh, you know, along the way, too. So it seems like it's working great. Tim, thanks. Thanks, Oliver. Appreciate the time. Very cool. Yeah, great explanation.